Yeah, thank you for the welcome. Uh, my presentation <coughs> is going to be on a number of specific uh, design principles for a, of a um, <coughs> digital currency scheme. And um, I will skip that because <coughs> uh, the previous speakers already said a lot on this, but let me say just one thing, and that is <coughs> that um, uh, at the beginning of the discussion, uh, most participants thought that digital currency would come in the form of cryptocurrency, but it seems to me that for the time being, so the, the new technology has a number of, uh, it's still in its infancy, and so uh, I guess, uh, and I, I have the impression that most experts now think that as a start, as a start, digital currency is very likely to come in the form of money on account. I won't say deposit money, it's mindful of, of, um, of bank money, but money on account. So in, at least in my presentation here, referring to digital currency means uh, <clears throat> money on some sort of central bank account. So. And um, <clears throat> uh, the major reason uh, for introducing, for the idea, the, developing the concept of introducing digital currency, uh, we have heard that from Mr. Clausen from uh, the Swedish Riksbank, that is that in actual fact the solid cash, the use of solid cash is, is, is dwindling away. It, it's vanishing, literally. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, here you see the example of Switzerland. It's the longest time series I was able to put together uh, uh, without much effort. And elsewhere the situation, however, is, is similar. The structure or picture is, is the same everywhere. And, and you see, even, even if statistics say that uh, cash is still 10% in the monetary aggregate M1, uh, in fact, it's less than that because much of the cash today is not in circulation. It's not active money but it's, it's held as a safety buffer, or it's in the case of the dollar and the euro, it's, it's circulating abroad as a, as a parallel currency. And what you see here is that, in fact, as a circular trend, that uh, uh, <clears throat> the rise of bank money, uh, the rise of bank money has marginalized central bank money in all advanced countries. And um, I mean, Imagine a situation when there is no more central bank money, uh, no more central bank money in public circulation. Then the central banks, the situation of the central banks is a bit remindful of, of King Lackland. So it's a king without king without land. So, and um, <clears throat> um, yes, uh, and so uh, by the way we speak. We speak of bank money. We do not so far have, have uh, we have not so far spoken of uh, uh, new money surrogates like, for example, money market fund shares. In fact, uh, pre uh, presenting an amount of two two and a half times the amount of M1. <clears throat> yes, and uh, I mean the situation here means that the the um, the effectiveness of conventional instruments of monetary policy have become very, very weak. And uh, so the, the hope is, and the idea is, that um, if that trend can be reverted, and so that there is more digital currency, a central bank money in, uh, in circulation in proportion to bank money, then we could expect um, also conventional instruments of monetary policy, particularly interest rate policy, to become uh, more effective uh, again. So enhanced transmission and thus uh, improved effectiveness of monetary policy is one big advantage. Uh, in itself, I think, a reason enough for introducing a digital currency. Another advantage, is, it has been said repeatedly here, is, is complete safety and um, <clears throat> And uh, there, there would also be no more counterparty risk uh, in bank payments, as is the case today, because banks, commercial banks, would no longer be need no longer to be trusted third parties. 
There is some hierarchy, I, I, I agree, but it, it, not in the way as is the case today, because the money, when we have digital currency, the money goes from the payer's currency account uh, right away, straight away into the, the payee's current account. It's not monetarily intermediated by the banks any longer. <clears throat> Then, of course, the, the comfort and the cost of handling digital currency is, 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 e is equal to the cost of bank money, and the costs of financing of digital currency for banks uh, can be expected to be about the same, or even less, as is the case with cash, and not least an increased, an increased proportion of central bank money in the money supply would, uh, would, of course, increase the gain from money creation to the benefit of the public purse. Now, <clears throat> it is widely assumed, uh, considering these advantages, that as soon as digital currency would be available, uh, there might be a strong migration uh, from bank money accounts to, to, to currency accounts. I don't believe it, not automatically, and digital currency, I guess, is, is not the fast-selling position it, it is supposed to be. For example, imagine a situation. <clears throat> we have a situation of business as usual. There is no heightened sentiment of uncertainty or even crisis. And um, uh, as, as um, Mr. Ordonez uh, has explained uh, right now, um, uh, the central banks and the governments continue, uh, they maintain far-reaching support for bank money and at the same time banks, uh, uh, banks pay um, some decent deposit interest on bank money and under such conditions um, people have actually, there is no need for people to change account, see? And uh, the question then is, um, uh, what are the design principles that can be expected to be supportive of a changeover from uh, uh, bank money to digital currency? Uh, the first principle <coughs> is uh, to secure countrywide access to currency accounts. And uh, this involves an expansion, of course, of the infrastructure uh, Michael Kumov has explained that the present RGTS systems are not, not yet suitable for the huge amount of uh, operations to, to be carried out. And so I guess the, the Swedish model, in fact, envisages a, an, an expansion or even a new infrastructure, pay, a new payment infrastructure complementing the already existing central bank payment infrastructure. And uh, Unrestricted access to currency accounts itself is part of a wider principle which actually is uh, not to restrict uh, access to digital currency. In this regard, as well as in, in another two or three aspects, uh, I, do, I do not agree with Michael Komov. <laughs> we agree very much in the analysis of the present um, money system but we don't agree in all aspects of what a digital currency system might look like. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and um, uh, most proposals I know so far, in, mo in most proposals of a digital currency system, a digital currency is meant to be a universal means of payment, a universal, universal means of payment, rightly so, uh, as I think, and limiting the available amount of digital currency or limiting access to digital currency to digital currency account that would clearly uh, counteract uh, that uh, intention and, and should, for example, the non-financial public be excluded uh, from using digital currency, the, the whole project would, actually, would in fact be uh, um, uh, uh, be pointless, uh, in my opinion, because the sense of it is to offer a new universal means of payment in public circulation. And, and, and that's, that's, that's what it is about, and, and not restricting the use in, in a, in a um, yes, to, to whomsoever and uh, to what amount soever. 
Uh, another, the next principle then is merging digital currency and interbank research into one circuit. Again, something uh, Michael Kumhoff has definitely said, which that should not be the case. And I say, why, why should that not be the case? I mean, uh, reserves and digital currency in public use, certainly it, there is different ownership. And uh, seen from the present uh, uh, bank money regime, the, its uh, reserves ha have, of course, a different function. But considering the, the central bank money as such, uh, the digital currency of central banks, uh, the, the kind of money and the quality of that money, it's all about the same sort of money. It's all about the same class, one identical class of money. And I see no need to keep that separate. Uh, quite to the contrary, uh, giving, giving digital currency a future perspective of a so towards the sovereign money system. It is actually important to, to create links and start merging uh, san um, san previous central bank reserves and future digital currencies. Um, so the next principle <coughs> subsequent to this is then a full convertibility of, a digital of a bank money into digital currency and also of course a, a, a convertibility uh, of um, digital currency uh, back to, to bank money accounts. And this includes a next or um, a principle linked to this, and here I guess that's, that may be a, a bone of contention, what I'm going to say right now, or it may, be a, it may come as a surprise of a number of my, to, to, to some people here, <laughs> and, and it's the following. <clears throat> it's uh, the question of bank, of bank run, and um, and yes, uh, the bank run I is a problem, and it's, it's, it, it will remain a problem. But let me stress that it is not a problem of digital currency. The bank run is a problem of fractional reserve banking, and uh, it's inherent into the present system. And as long as we have proactive bank money creation that is accommodated by the central banks, um, this will surely remain a major source of instability. But it's not due to digital currency, it's due to bank money. <laughs> Be clear about that. <clears throat> Normally, the bank money problem is much played down, whereas in the context of discussing digital currency, I think it is unduly exaggerated, because, uh, <clears throat> as, as, as I said, bank runs do not occur in a situation of business as usual. Bank runs occur when banks get into trouble. And then, of course, the demand for safe money goes up. In this case, the demand for digital currency will go up. And uh, if it's a strong process, then the banks will, of course, not have, they will not be able in, in a short run uh, to, 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 um, to provide uh, enough uh, eligible securities for obtaining uh, uh, fresh central bank money in order to fulfill their empty promise to hand out the, the, the empty promise of bank money, to hand it out to fully in 100% uh, in cash or then in digital currency. And that's, that's, a, a, a very, that's very destabilizing indeed. Now, therefrom, I would say the convertibility of bank money into digital currency must be ensured not only during periods of business as usually, but also and urgently in a bank run situation. And in actual fact, I think that warranting the convertibility of bank money also and precisely in a situation of bank run, uh, that is the definite response to the bank run problem. This is to say that in a bank run situation, central banks should stabilize banking and finance, but not by trying to stop the bank run, but by supporting the conversion of bank money into digital currency. And I think that's the final solution. And it will very, it's, it's very likely not to result in a 100% switch over. But the, the knowledge as such, the, the certainty, I, I could 
con uh, convert uh, that the bank money I have if I if I wished so. That that alone would be would already would already stabilize the situation very much. Yes. Um, Now the next uh, principle then is um, uh, as already uh, Mr. Ordonius has said, and I guess I guess Edgar Wortmann will say a, a word on this too later on. Today uh, the bank money is is supported by a number of auxiliary constructions, without which fractional reserve banking would have collapsed long ago at the latest in the 1930s, so, or even earlier. And this, the central bank uh, uh, is supporting bank money uh, in its function as, an, as a lender of last resort, not, not only in, under conditions of business as usual, but particularly in a situation of crisis. And uh, a lender of last resort by almost unconditionally accommodating the bank's demand uh, uh, for reserves. And the government gives guarantees for bank money in a number of ways. Uh, first, by accepting bank money in payment of taxes and by generally using bank money. By recapitalizing banks if need be. And also by standing bail for bank money. Each account up to one to two uh, hundred thousands uh, of euros depending on the country and as long as such guarantees are kept up combined with basically unrestricted proactive bank money creation I think one cannot seriously um, expect the, introdu the introduction of digital currency to eventually lead to, 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 to a share of digital currency important enough to become system defining uh, again um, and so those, um, one has to think about reducing and finally removing those uh, central bank and, and government guarantees for bank money. And the bigger the share of digital currency uh, has become, the more the state guarantees, in fact, uh, can be withdrawn. Uh, Payment transactions uh, uh, of, of public bodies. Uh, I said uh, um, public bodies are using are using uh, uh, bank money rather than uh, central bank money, and in fact, I, I I don't know exactly the situation in in different regions of the world, but but in Europe, uh, uh, state bodies uh, partly they use uh, bank accounts and partly uh, they use. Um, transaction accounts with the central bank. And um, regarding the cash, the solid cash, the remainder of the solid cash we still use, it is among the absurdities of the present bank money regime that state bodies, ever more state bodies today, starting with the tax office, uh, they, they require us to, to pay in private bank money rather than in the sovereign currency of the state central bank. So I think that public bodies sh uh, should be obliged to transact via currency accounts. And of course, uh, it has to be considered also in this case that uh, the state's acceptance of bank money is one of the key pillars of the entire system. And, and if that pillar would be taken away too fast, and considering that uh, Government expenditure is now at 35 to 55 percent of GDP. That would, of course, be that would create a dangerous situation, sim similar to similar to a bank run situation. So that ha that would have to be done, or that has to be done gradually. But nevertheless, it should be done. And public bodies, as as soon as the digital currency is available, should start to use digital currency accounts and slowly but surely expanding the use of these. Now the question of um, interest, uh, digital currency, how many, five minutes, yes, uh, digital currency be interest bearing. So I'm not so sure why, it, why central bank money ought to be interest bearing. I mean, I understand how Michael uh, uh, explains that and, and the, uh, you have a point. 
but let me let me consider the question more more fundamentally. I think that interest is paid on credit and debt positions. Interest is paid on, say, a, a promissory position of some sort, but digital currency as a means of payment is not a promissory item as bank money is. But it's, it's high-powered central bank money, it's high-powered base money in its own right. It doesn't need coverage in any other kind of money or by any, by any kind of collateral. The collateral the central banks demand from the banks, that is a security for the credit. But the means of payment as such needs no coverage at all. It's fiat money in its own right. And so basically, uh, paying interest on digital currency is not substantiated. On the other hand, I agree that, uh, or, what, or first let me say, uh, quite, over, uh, quite openly a number of scholars had said we, we want to have digital currency because we want to, to, to impose negative interest. That's one, one reason. Personally, I don't support it, but that's another uh, um, um, chapter. Um, Mar uh, Michael has said, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tool to clear the market. Whatever this finally means, but the way I understand it is um, it's a tool it's a way to, to complement or even counteract the deposit interest the banks are likely to pay on bank money again. And so if, if we have a deposit, uh, deposit interest on bank money but no interest on, on digital currency, the situation might arise that uh, in times of business as usual, or no, in, in, in times of uncertainty and crisis, we, we would have we would have a, 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 a shift, a kind of fluctuation into, into a, a digital currency and when things are normalizing then we, we might have a shift backwards uh, to bank money and I think that such kind of back and forth that's not desirable and so I would say pay and deposit interest that is equal to the deposit interest the banks are paying on the bank money that would create a level playing field and that would be okay. As a concluding remark, let me say the following. Uh, I think, um, so the introduction of digital currency, in fact, it raises a number of questions. Uh, as Mr. Clausen had said, um, they, you, you said, if I got it right, we are not so sure about many questions, uh, what, the answer, what the answer is. And I think it's, not, it's, it's actually not necessary to know all answers in details in advance because you see the, moder the modern world has been living now for one to even 300 uh, years with that conflicting situation of uh, sovereign money or central bank money on the one hand and bank money uh, on the other hand. And... Um, uh, the equally conflicting situation of uh, digital currency side by side with bank money that will basically be not too different from this. There would be a number of advantages but for the rest it would not be too different from this and in all events I guess that um, introducing digital currency uh, in parallel with bank money in whatsoever variant that would be a step forward uh, coming to a degree with the advantages mentioned above. And let me stress, let me point out, by comparison, the problems inherent to the present near complete rule of bank money are still much bigger than problems related to digital currency might be. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Hello, my name is Daniel Nice. Um, I have a question regarding the central ledger or a centralized ledger mm -hmm. to all the money reformers and uh, speakers and um, thinkers that believe in the Vollgeld or sovereign money. If you have a central ledger that is run by a central authority, mm -hmm 
and there are so many accounts on there. No matter what you have, no matter what you do, there's no way of protecting that. How do you think in a server client architecture that we live in today, despite DLT and blockchain, how would you make sure to the world that it is safe? Well, basically, um, uh, first, I, 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 I want to say that uh, regarding the, the specific technology, I cannot say uh, something on this. But the problem of... It's, t it's two different problems you have mentioned. The first problem is one of centralization. And apparently, uh, if you want to organize so uh, in an efficient and uh, ecologically efficient, energy efficient and cost efficient way, you apparently need some degree of centralization. That's simply reasonable to have that. Or the complete and, opposite. I don't, hmm? I don't agree. Yes, yeah, sure, you don't. But I, 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 do, I, do, I do not. You see, decentralization is not a virtue in itself. And uh, pe people have thought for a long time, a decentralization and, and, uh, and so on, that's diversity, that's an ecological problem, it isn't. It can be solved, um, it is solved. No, and, well, yes, maybe. Uh, let me say that um, we, gener we have the problem that everything is, is being electronic nowadays and is going to be digitized and, and the data are ubiquitous. And that trend will, will continue, and we, 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 cannot, we cannot roll it back. So that's why I personally I believe we, we should not uh, willfully abolish solid cash. Not that. But in the middle and longer run, cash will disappear. I'm very sure about that. It will disappear, and wanting to maintain cash simply for reasons of data and person protection, very soon will be a kind of, it will, it will become quixotic a kind of Don Quixote and Sancho Pancho riding against the windmills, you know. Not, not now, not yet, but in a not too distant future this will be the case. And our task is to, to, create, to create a number of cautionary regulations concerning data protection and person protection, that's all I know, and you will never have an administrative, institutional or technological system that is totally safe. If people want to abuse, if powerful people want to abuse things, they can do so. So, and that's actually, that's one, that's what I have learned from the, the financial crisis, that if there is a very strong, strong cross-border political and economic will not to regard uh, the law, so then people will do it, and then, then, then you can forget about the law and institutional arrangements.